Hello everyone, I am Sanjeev and welcome to the fourth presentation in section 2 of CISO 1011. So in this presentation I am going to discuss the algorithms for solving the unconstrained minimization problem and I am going to discuss the steepest descent methods under different norms. So here are the norms that I am going to discuss. The first one is the alto norm which results in the gradient descent algorithm. The second norm is the quartic norm which allows you to change the coordinate system so as to have the low condition number of the hashian near the optimum uh, which results in the faster convergence of the algorithm and finally the L1 norm steeper descent which results in the coordinate descent algorithm so all these things I'm going to cover in this presentation and here's a MATLAB code you can download the MATLAB code and you can simulate the examples that I'm going to present in this presentation So these are topics that I'm going to cover in this presentation. The first one is a general discussion about the steepest descent methods, such as the direction derivatives, the unnormalized steepest descent direction, the normalized steepest descent direction, the relation between the two, and the relation between the norm and the dual norm of a vector. Uh, once I'm done with this, I'm going to cover the steepest descent methods for the L2 norm, then for the quartic norm, and finally for the L1 norm, which results in the coordinate descent algorithm. And then I'm going to discuss the convergence analysis of steepest descent methods under any general norm. So let's begin with the directional derivative. So consider function f, which is a convex function, and is a mapping from r into r. So the directional derivative of function f in the direction v at point x is given as del x transpose times v. And for this direction v, this vector v to be a descent direction, the directional derivative should be non-positive, or we can say that it should be negative. And we can make this directional derivative as negative as possible. Like we can make the length of V infinite and we can choose the direction such that it makes an acute angle with a negative gradient. And therefore this directional derivative can be made as negative as possible. Another way of saying is that suppose there are two vectors A and B, then A dot B is a scalar projection of vector B on vector A multiplied by the length of this vector A. And we can make this dot product even positive infinity or negative infinity by increasing the length of vector A. And therefore, to make this dot product finite, we have to restrict the length of vector A. And another way of saying this is that the directional derivative is a linear function of vector V. And therefore, for the uh, to bound a linear function, we have to bound the length of this vector V. And therefore, there should be some restriction on the length of vector V. And this length is measured by some norm. So the descent direction makes sense only the length of the descent direction is restricted. Otherwise, we can make the direction derivative as small as you want, as negative as you want. And this length is measured by some norm. And the restriction is such that the norm of V is less than or equal to some positive parameter, where the theta is one for the normalized steepest descent direction. So this is any uh, valid norm and different norms result in different uh, descent algorithms or different steepest descent algorithms as we will see uh, later in this presentation. So here's a normalized steepest descent direction. In the normalized steepest descent direction, we have this constraint optimization problem. So the normalized steepest descent direction delta x NSD is given as the argument of this constraint optimization problem, which is minimizing del x transpose V such that norm of V is less than or equal to one. So by solving this constant optimization problem, which is a convex optimization problem, we can get the normalized steepest descent direction. And as we can see, once this vector V makes an obtuse angle with the gradient of the function, this value is going to be negative. And therefore, to minimize this value, we have to make length of V as large as possible. And the largest possible length is one and therefore if you plot the unit ball defined by this norm then you will see that the descent direction the normalized steepest descent direction touches the boundary of this unit ball so mathematically the normalized steepest descent direction is a direction in the unit ball defined by this norm that extends farthest in the direction of negative gradient and if you plot this unit ball you will see that the normalized steepest descent direction touches the boundary of this unit ball 
And here's the definition of the unnormalized steepest descent direction, which is uh, denoted as delta XSD. So delta XSD is the dual norm of the gradient of function times the normalized steepest descent direction. That is dual norm of the gradient of function times delta X and SD. Where this norm, uh, this star denotes the dual norm of this norm. So the unnormalized steepest descent direction satisfies this property. The del x transpose times delta x s d is going to the negative of the square of the dual norm of the gradient of the function. And we will derive this relation in the next few slides. And this definition of dual norm we are going to utilize in this derivation. So here's the definition of the dual norm. Dual norm of a vector z is given as supremum of z transpose x such that the norm of x is less than or equal to 1. So this is the definition of the dual norm and it will be utilized in the derivation of this relation. And there's another relation that, uh, that will be utilized in the derivation of this relation. And there's a relation between the infimum and supremum. So infimum of z is negative of supremum of negative z. So let's consider an example. We have a set z which takes the value 1, 2, 3 and 4 and negative z will take negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 and negative 4. So the infimum of z is 1 and the supremum of negative z is negative 1 and therefore the infimum of z is negative supremum of negative z. Also the supremum of z is 4 and infimum of negative z is negative 4 therefore supremum of z is negative and infimum of negative z. So all you have to remember is that the infimum of z is negative of supremum of negative z. So let's consider derivation of this relation. So from the definition of the steepest descent direction delta x and sd which is the unnormalized steepest descent direction we have this relation delta fx del fx transpose times delta x sd is dual norm of the gradient of function times del fx transpose times delta x and sd and expanding this term we get that this dot product is equal to del fx transpose times argument of this constraint optimization problem so the argument minimizes the del fx transpose times v that is it gives the infimum of del fx transpose times v such that the norm of v is less than equal to 1. We have just utilized the definition of the normalized steepest descent direction which means that delta x nsd is a vector which gives the infimum of del fx transpose times v such that the norm of v is less than equal to 1. Therefore this product that del x transpose times delta x nsd is nothing but the infimum of del x transpose times delta x nsd such that the norm of delta x nsd is less than equal to 1. And utilizing the definition or the relation between the infimum and supremum we get that this dot product is negative of the supremum of negative of the supremum of negative of the gradient transpose times delta x and sd such that the norm of the delta x and sd is as equal to 1 which is nothing but the dual norm of the gradient of the function. Hence del fx transpose times delta x sd is negative of the square of the dual norm of the gradient of the function. So all you have to remember is the definition of the normalized steepest descent direction, the definition of the steepest descent direction which is unnormalized and this relation which will be utilized in the convergence analysis in the end of this presentation. So let's consider the steepest descent algorithm for different norms. So the first norm that I'm going to cover is the L2 norm where L2 norm of z is given as under root of z transpose z which results in the gradient descent algorithm and that I will derive in the next few slides. So the final result of using the L2 norm is that delta x sd is negative of the dual norm of the gradient of the function times del fx over norm of del fx where negative of del fx over norm of del fx is the is, uh, is a normalized steepest descent direction and therefore multiplying the normalized steepest descent direction with the dual norm of the gradient of the function gives a steepest descent direction which is unnormalized and there are two ways of deriving this relation the first one is simple vector algebra and the second is uh, solving the constraint optimization problem. So the dual norm of the L2 norm is just an L2 norm. The norm and the dual norm satisfies the relation that 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1. Where P is a norm and Q is its dual norm. 
So the dual norm of L2 norm is again an L2 norm. So this, so we can find this descent direction using two methods. The first one is a vector algebra, simple vector algebra, and second one is solving the constraint optimization problem. And this derivation can be skipped if you just want to implement this steepest descent algorithm with L2 norm. So here's the first method, simple vector algebra, uh, which is which says that the dot product of uh, the two vectors, vector a and vector v, here vector a is del x trans del x, the gradient of the function, and vector b is the v, the descent direction. So del x transpose v is norm of v times norm of the gradient of the function times cos theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors, the gradient of the function and the descent direction. So to minimize this directional derivative, the cos theta should be negative. So we want this cos theta to be negative. And once this cos theta is negative, this dot product is going to be negative. So to minimize this uh, directional derivative, uh, we want to make the, uh, the length of V as large as possible. And therefore the maximum length of V is one. And therefore we set norm of V as one. And the product is minimum when norm is one and cos theta is negative one. The minimum value of cos theta can be negative one. And therefore this implies that the minimum of this, this directional derivative is minimized when the cos theta is negative one and norm of v is one. By negative one cos theta, it means that the angle between the gradient of the function and the direction v is 180 degrees. It means that v points in the direction of the negative of the gradient of this function. And therefore, this gives us the delta x nsd, which is a normalized steepest descent direction. It is negative of the gradient over norm of the gradient of the function. In this case, it is normalized if we take the norm of V is just one. And therefore, for an L2 norm, the direction V points the direction of the negative of the gradient of the function. And delta XSD is negative of the gradient of the function. Another way of deriving this is solving an equivalent optimization problem. We have the constraint that uh, norm of v should be less than equal to 1. Uh, so we can solve an equivalent problem where the square of the norm, square of the L2 norm of the descent direction is less than equal to 1. These two problems are not equal problems, but they are the equivalent problem. And for deriving the descent direction, uh, uh, we'll solve an equivalent optimization problem. So uh, here's a Lagrangian multiplier lambda for this inequality. V transpose V is equal to one. So we form the Lagrangian L of, which is a function of V and lambda is given as del x transpose times V plus lambda times V transpose V minus lambda. And we minimize this Lagrangian over the primal variable, which is the, uh, which is a vector V. And we can minimize this uh, since this is a convex quadratic function of V. Therefore, we can minimize this by setting the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to V as zero, which gives that V is negative del fx over two lambda. You can just simply derive the derivative of del fx transpose times V is just the gradient of the function and the derivative of lambda times V transpose V is going to be two lambda V. And setting that to zero gives that V is negative of the gradient over two lambda. And therefore, uh, we substitute this value of V in L of lambda, which gives the, uh, the dual function denoted by G of lambda as negative del x transpose times negative del x over four lambda minus lambda. And for lambda getting equal to zero, this is a concave function of lambda. Therefore, the maximum is obtained by taking the derivative of g of lambda with respect to lambda and setting that to zero, which gives that lambda is norm of the gradient of function over two. So for lambda greater than zero, there's a, con there's a concave function of lambda and therefore g, and therefore taking the derivative of the lambda with respect to lambda and setting it to zero gives the value of lambda, which maximizes this function. Substituting this value of lambda back in this relation, for V and lambda gives us the delta X and SD, which is V is negative of the gradient of function over the norm of the gradient of the function. And therefore the unnormalized steepest recent direction is negative of the gradient of function. And 
once the direction is the negative gradient it is simply the gradient descent algorithm which has been discussed in length in second and third presentation so the final conclusion is that in case of l2 norm the steepest descent algorithm is same as a gradient descent algorithm and since it has been discussed in detail with the complete convergence analysis using the back tracking line search you can go back to the presentation second and third for for the convergence analysis of the gradient descent algorithm so now let's move on to the steepest descent methods for the quartic norm and the quartic norm uh, the norm of z the quartic norm of z with subscript p is defined as z transpose times p times z to the power half where p is a positive definite matrix so uh, this results in the gradient descent method after the change of coordinate and we'll see this in this presentation that how it results in the change of coordinate so we can derive the steepest descent direction the unnormalized or the normalized steepest descent direction by solving this co uh, this constraint optimization problem which is again a convex optimization problem since the objective function is a linear function of v and the constraint is a convex quadratic function of v so a con uh, so a linear function subject, co uh, subject to convex constraint is a convex optimization problem and we can introduce the lagrange multipliers for this inequality v transpose p times v is equal to 1 and this lambda is greater than equal to 0 and the Lagrangian which is a function of v and lambda is del fx transpose times v plus lambda times v transpose p times v minus lambda and we can minimize this Lagrangian with respect to the primal variable v by setting the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to v as 0 and since this is a convex function of v convex quartic function therefore it will result in the unique value of v and second this derivative results in v is equals to negative of p inverse times del of fx over 2 lambda driving this is pretty simple the derivative of this term with respect to v is simply the gradient of the function and the derivative of this term with respect to v is twice of lambda times p times v and setting that equation to 0 results in this equation that v is negative of p inverse times del fx over 2 lambda so setting this uh, so substituting this value of v in this lagrangian function results in the dual function which is the concave function of lambda since lambda is greater than equal to 0 therefore this is a concave function of lambda and therefore setting the derivative of this concave function with respect to lambda as 0 results in the value of lambda which maximizes this function and the value of lambda is del fx transpose times p inverse times del fx over 2 and substituting this value of lambda back in this relation results in delta x nsd which is equal to v as negative of del x transpose times p inverse times del x to the power negative half times p inverse times del x and therefore delta x sd which is the dual norm of the gradient function times delta x nsd is simply negative of p inverse times del x so the descent direction delta x sd is negative of p inverse times del x where p is positive definite matrix and now we'll understand that how this results in the gradient descent algorithm after the change of coordinates so assume we are changing the coordinates uh, we have this relation that vector y is p to the power half times x and therefore the l2 norm of y is the quartic norm of x and we define a function f bar which is a function of y f bar of y is simply f of p to the power negative half times y which is fx so the descent direction for f bar of y at y is simply the negative of the gradient of the function f bar at y which is delta y s d is negative of the gradient of the function f bar which is negative of p to the power negative half del of f of p to the power negative half times y which is nothing but negative of p to the power negative half times del of x and therefore delta x s d using this relation delta x s d is p to the power negative half times delta y s d and therefore delta x s d is negative of p inverse times del of x what this means is that if we have this quartic norm 
then first we can change the coordinates by defining a new vector y which is p to the power half times x and then performing the gradient descent algorithm in the new coordinate system. So solving the steepest descent algorithm with the quartic norm is same as solving the gradient descent algorithm after the change of coordinates. So this is the final conclusion. Uh, steepest descent method in the quartic norm is the gradient descent method applied to the problem after the change of coordinates. And this can help in overcoming the large condition number of the Hessian of the function at the optimum. Suppose after the change of coordinate, the condition number of the Hessian near the optimum is approximately equal to one, then we can have the fast convergence. Therefore, we would like to change the coordinate such that the condition number of the Hessian near the optimum is moderate. So let's move on to the next section of this presentation, which discusses the steepest descent algorithm using the L1 norm. So the L1 norm of a vector z is simply the sum of the absolute values of the components of the vector z. So using the L1 norm for restricting the length of the descent direction results in the coordinate descent algorithm. And let's derive the descent direction for the L1 norm. So the descent direction in case of L1 norm can be derived analytically. And to simplify this derivation, let's consider that all the components of the gradient of the function have the same sign. It can either be positive or it can either be negative. So let's consider that all the components have the negative values. So the dot product or the directional derivative can be minimized if the components of V have the opposite sign of the components of the gradient of the function. So in this case, all the components of V will be positive since all the components of the gradient of the function are negative. Therefore, to minimize this directional derivative, we, uh, we need to have all the positive components in the vector V. And therefore, this optimization problem becomes arg main of some or, or i from 1 to n, where n is the number of components in vector V or the dimension of vector V. So sum over all i from 1 to n del fx i times vi where del fx i is the ith component of the gradient function and vi is the ith component of vector v. So we will constraint that sum over i from 1 to n vi is equal to 1 since the absolute value is same as the value of the component since they are positive. Therefore sum over all i from 1 to n vi is equal to 1. And since the sys uh, and since the sum of all the vi's is one, therefore this can be thought as a weighted sum of the components of the gradient of the function. And since each term is negative, therefore the minimum is attained if the component of v corresponding to the maximum absolute value component of the gradient of the function is one, and all the components of v are zero. So let's assume that the kth term has a maximum absolute value in the gradient and therefore by setting vk equal to 1 and order v as 0 gives a minimum value of this sum since all the components uh, are constrained by this equation that sum over i from 1 to n v equal to 1 therefore if we set just one component which corresponds to the maximum absolute value of this vector as 1 and all the 0 then it will result in the minimum value of this sum since each value is negative. Hence the absolute value of the component of V corresponds to the element of the gradient F having maximum magnitude is 1 and all the components are 0. So we set the component of V corresponding to the maximum absolute value of the gradient as 1 and all the components are 0. And this thing can be generalized for any norm and even we can solve a practical example. So consider there is a vector A. So A is a vector having the components 1, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0.9, negative 7, negative 2, negative 1, and 0.8. So let's solve this constraint optimization problem. So let's minimize A times V subject to constraint that
So the scissors and the vector v whose all components are zero and the component corresponding to the maximum component in A, the maximum absolute value component in A is one. So the absolute value of uh, the fifth component has a maximum absolute value is seven and therefore the fifth component in the vector in the vector v is one and all the components are zero. So for any general gradient uh, where some of the components are positive, some of the components are negative and some of the components are zero, we just take the component which results in the maximum absolute value and we set the corresponding component of V as one and its sign is opposite to the sign of the component of F which has a maximum absolute value. So let K be the index of the component which has a maximum absolute value in this gradient vector, which means that the L infinity norm of the gradient of the function is simply the absolute value of the kth component. And therefore the normalized steepest descent direction is simply the negative of the sign of the kth component of the gradient times ek, where ek is a standard basis vector with kth component one and all the components are zero. So we have a gradient vector we take the absolute values of all the components in this vector and the component which has a maximum absolute value, the basis vector EK, which is a standard basis vector, the, uh, the component corresponding to the kth index is one and all the components are zero. And the sign of this component is the negative of the, of the sign of the kth component of the gradient of function. So this is delta X NSD and Delta X SD is simply the dual norm of the L1 norm of the gradient of function times delta X and SD. And the dual norm of L1 norm is L infinity norm since the relation one over P plus one over Q equal to one. Therefore we get that L, inf uh, that the L infinity norm is the dual norm of the L1 norm, which results in negative of the L infinity norm of the gradient of function times the sine of the kth component of the gradient times ek, where ek is a standard basis vector with kth component one and all the components are zero. And therefore, the delta x sd is simply the standard basis vector ek times negative of the kth component of the gradient of the function. Therefore, this algorithm results in the coordinate descent algorithm. So suppose your vector x is an n dimensional vector and therefore the gradient is also an n dimensional vector. So we select a component that has a maximum absolute value in the gradient and the corresponding component of x is adjusted at each iteration of the algorithm. And the descent direction that is selected is delta xsd is negative del fx over del xk times ek where k is a index corresponding to the maximum absolute value of the gradient of the function. So sometimes the coordinate descent algorithm can even trivialize the minimization uh, procedure because it can reduce the problem to a one dimensional problem at each iteration. And we'll practically apply this coordinate descent algorithm in examples in the end of this presentation. So that's it for the steepest descent methods. Uh, till now we have analyzed the steepest descent method for the L2 norm, which results in the gradient descent algorithm. We have analyzed it for the cortic norm, which results in the change of coordinate and then applying the gradient descent algorithm. And finally the L1 norm, which results in the coordinate descent algorithm. So in the second last section of this presentation, we are going to do the convergence analysis of the steepest descent methods on an any general norm using the backtracking line search algorithm. So for this convergence analysis, we will utilize the property of the norm, which is that for any gamma belonging to zero to one, the norm of Z, that is the norm defined by any general norm, the norm of vector Z can be bounded by its L2 norm multiplied by the gamma. So this property will be utilized in the convergence analysis and using the relation that norm of Z can be bounded by its L2 norm with parameter gamma and the definition of the delta X SD, which is 
the dual norm of the gradient of the function times delta x and sd and use the relation that the hessian of the function has an upper bound which is m times i where i is the identity matrix of appropriate size and m is any positive constant this comes from the strong convexity assumption from the presentation one we have already uh, seen this relation that the hessian has an upper bound which is given by m times i so you using all these three relations it can be easily seen that f to d of t which is a function of t which is f of x plus t times delta x sd by doing the taylor approximation of this function we can see that it is less than or equal to fx minus t times dual norm of the gradient of the function squared plus m times t square over 2 gamma square times the square of the dual norm of the gradient of the function uh, the second term in the Taylor series approximation is del fx transpose times delta x sd which is negative of the square of the dual norm of the gradient of the function and for the third component which is delta x d transpose del square fx times delta x sd is m times t square over 2 gamma square times the square of the dual norm of the gradient of the function here we have utilized this property that the hessian has an upper bound and this property that norm of z is equal to gamma times the l2 norm of z and we've also utilized the definition of delta xt for deriving this third component so this right hand side is a convex quadratic function of t and therefore this can be minimized by setting the derivative of the right hand side with respect to t as zero so by minimizing the right hand side that is by, uh, by setting the derivative to zero we get uh, we get the value of t which minimizes the right hand side and t and this value of t is noted as t star which is gamma square over m and substitute this value back in this uh, in this equation gives that f of x plus t star times delta x sd is equal to fx minus gamma square over 2m times the square of the dual norm of the gradient of function and negative of the square of the gradient of function is nothing but del fx transpose times delta x sd so we get this relation that f of x plus t star times delta x sd is less than or equal to fx plus gamma square over 2m times del fx transpose times delta x sd now we are performing the back tracking line search algorithm for finding the step length t and we know that the back ranking line search algorithm has two parameters alpha and beta where alpha ranges from 0 to 0 0.5 and beta ranges between 0 and 1 and therefore uh, for alpha belonging to 0 to, uh, 0 to 0 0.5 f of x plus gamma square over 2m times direction derivative is less than or equal to fx plus alpha times gamma square over m times direction derivative since this direction derivative is negative therefore this relation holds which implies that the backtracking line search algorithm exits with a step length which is a minimum of 1 or beta times gamma square over m. The backtracking line search algorithm uh, exits when f of x plus t star uh, times delta x sd is equal to fx plus t times alpha times del fx transpose times delta x sd. And from this relation, we can easily see that the backtracking line search will exit with t. Uh, which is minimum of 1 or beta times gamma square over m therefore the f of x plus t times delta x sd where t is the step length written by the back rank line search algorithm is less than equal to fx minus alpha times minimum over t where t is minimum over 1 comma beta gamma square over m times the negative of the square of the dual norm of the gradient of function and subtracting p star from both sides as we, as we have done it from the uh, as we have done it for the gradient descent algorithm uh, we are denoting the value of x at iteration number k plus 1 as x plus and at iteration number k as x and we get that f of x plus minus p star is equal to f of x minus p star minus alpha times gamma square times minimum of 1 comma beta times gamma square over m times the the square of the l2 norm of the gradient of function where again we have utilized this definition or this property that any norm can be bounded by its l2 norm with a parameter gamma be between 0 and 1 therefore we get this relation 
and from the first presentation we have a relation that the square of the L2 norm of the Grignard function is given equal to 2m times fx minus p star where m is the lower bound on the hessian of the function the del square fx is greater than or equal to m times i where m is some positive parameter and i is the identity matrix so we have already uh, done this in the first presentation and we have this inequality we have derived this inequality and therefore substituting this inequality in this equation results in fx plus minus p star is equal to fx minus p star minus this term times fx minus p star so this gives that fx plus minus p star is equal to c times fx minus p star so applying this inequality recursively gives the following relation that f of x k plus 1 minus p star is as equal to c to the power k times f of x 0 minus p star where f of x 0 is the initial value of the function and x 0 is the initial iterate the random value of the variable x through which it is initialized so this results in the linear convergence so steepest descent algorithm has a linear convergence so let's see some examples of the steepest descent algorithm use the l2 norm the cortic norm and the l1 norm so first we'll consider the l2 norm and the function is x1 square plus gamma times x2 square and this gamma controls the condition number or the eccentricity of the sublevel sets or the hessian of the function near the optimum so the l2 norm is just square root of z transpose z resulting in the gradient descent algorithm and the back end line search parameters are alpha equal to 0.1 and beta is 0.8 So this is the main file, the SEYE is the best example run that runs different examples. So the back end line search parameters are alpha equal to 0 0.01 and beta equal to 0 0.8. And the tolerance that the stopping criterion is 10 to the power negative 6. And we'll analyze this function for different values of gamma. So first let us consider the L2 norm case. So the norm is the L2 norm which results in the gradient descent algorithm. So it's running for several values of gamma. So we have this curve, uh, there's a gamma versus the number of iterations. And as you can see, as gamma approaches zero, the number of iterations reaches to around 212 or something. And as gamma increases, the number of iteration increases. Since uh, there's a gradient descent algorithm, therefore it depends on the condition number of the hessian or the condition number or the eccentricity of the sublevel sets near the optimum. So this is for the gamma equal to 0 0.05. We can see that it has taken 211 iterations. For gamma equal to 0 0.1, uh, the number of iterations are reduced to 110. For gamma equal to 0.5, just 19 iterations. And for gamma equal to 1, this results in just one iteration. And we have already analyzed this in the first in the second presentation and for the gamma equal to point uh, gamma equal to 5 it takes 39 iterations and gamma equal to 10 it takes 84 iterations and for 
gamma group 20 it takes around 175 iterations so this was a uh, gradient descent algorithm uh, which is the steepest descent using the l2 norm and now we will see the case for the quartic norm and uh, here the quartic norm the, uh, the matrix p is an exact Haitian matrix which will result in just one iteration and why it results in just a single iteration we will see in the next presentation in the Newton's method if p is exact Haitian then this results in the Newton's algorithm which has a quartic convergence phase and a damped phase and and we'll see in the next presentation that Newton's method for the quartic functions takes very less number of iterations and that's why here in the two dimensional case with the quartic function with p equal to exact Haitian it results in the Newton's algorithm and therefore it results just a single iteration to reach to the optimum value. So this is the result for running the steepest descent with the quartic norm with matrix p as exact Haitian and as we can see it takes a single iteration for all values of gamma there's a curve for the number of iterations versus gamma so let's analyze this for l1 norm uh, for the quartic norm So returning for the quartic norm with p matrix as exact Haitian and as you can see for all values of gamma it takes just single iteration since the Newton method for the quartic function works very well and with p matrix as exact Haitian it results in a Newton's algorithm and therefore for the quartic functions it takes just single iteration for all values of gamma and now we will analyze the L1 norm case So L1 norm results in the coordinate descent algorithm. At each iteration of the algorithm, it minimizes the particular value, the, the particular component of the vector x. Since x is a two-dimensional vector, therefore each iteration it minimizes one of the dimension. So for gamma equal to 0 0.02, uh, so for gamma equal to 0 0.05, the L1 norm case with the coordinate descent algorithm takes 212 iterations. And as we can see in the first iteration, it minimizes the function along this direction. And for all other iterations, it minimizes the function along this direction. For gamma equal to 100 and uh, for gamma equal to 0.1, it takes 111 iterations. For gamma equal to 0.5, it takes 20 iterations. And for gamma equal to one, it takes two iteration. First is uh, first it minimizes along this direction and then along this direction. For gamma equal to point, uh, for gamma equal to five, it takes thirty six iterations. And this is a curve for gamma versus number of iterations. So as we can see for the L1 norm case with alpha equal to point one and beta equal to point eight, with the starting point as ten comma one, it results in the following curve that gamma versus number of iterations so in the next presentation we will analyze the newton's algorithm using the backlink line search algorithm so the huge number of iterations is a result of backlink line search and in this case the coordinate descent can be trivialized since we know that at each iteration one of the component of x is minimized therefore instead of performing the backlink line search we can perform the exact line search which may result in just uh, two iterations for this case of quartic function in two dimensional space. So that's it for this presentation and the next presentation will demonstrate the Newton's algorithm. So thank you for watching this presentation. I'm Sanjeev from searching.com.